Hi everyone, my name is Danelle Boyd and I'm a photographer and filmmaker living here in Iceland and in this video I'm going to give you a behind the scenes look into the making of a short film titled Volcano for the People. This is just right in front of your face. It's like you're looking at the creation of the universe. Kind of like almost like an eruption for the people. Along with my partner Frank Nievenhaus, we spent just under one week planning, shooting, and editing to create our vision for a video that turns the camera around on the people and explores what it really means to connect with nature through a collective experience. Now, we titled the film Volcano for the People because that's what we discovered it to be. I mean, literally thousands and thousands of people. And we wanted to illustrate how the volcano impacted the lives of those people who were able to visit the volcanic eruption site and we also wanted to understand for ourselves why experiencing the volcano with so many people somehow enhanced our overall connection to the landscape itself. Did everyone else there feel the same way that we did? And if they did, why? I guess you'll just have to watch the film to find out if we were able to answer those questions. You're probably thinking, isn't a volcano like incredibly dangerous <laughs> and how and why would so many people just be able to visit it like like this and why would we get so close to film it well the short answer is that this volcanic event was and is incredibly unique and probably a first for the history of our planet at least in terms of access and safety now, for weeks leading up to the volcanic eruption, nearly 50,000 earthquakes shook the Reykjanes Peninsula, which is where the eruption eventually did occur. So we did have a little bit of warning, and scientists were actually able to track the magma as it moved underground from the very beginning. Now, as soon as the first lava appeared on the surface, the Icelandic search and rescue team went into action straight away to establish safety protocols and monitoring of the eruption site, which happened to be in an incredibly ideal viewing location. Situated in a valley, the slowish flowing lava could actually be viewed from the surrounding hillsides, while the strong prevailing winds here in Iceland meant that poisonous gases were carried away from the eruption site. So as long as we had the wind at our backs, we were safe. Now, from the beginning, the Icelandic Meteorological Office and national news agencies quickly set up an advisory system that gave daily updates about the viewing conditions for the eruption site, which is actually less than an hour outside of the capital, Reykjavik. And every day before we went out, we'd rely on these reports to plan our approach for our shoots. Now, on the ground, search and rescue members all of which are trained volunteers, monitored gas levels and advised people on when it was safe to be in certain areas. And they even went as far as setting up parking lots, official hiking trails, and a permanent base camp for themselves to ensure the safety of the thousands of people that flocked to Volcano Stadium. The rescue team worked each day to clear the area when and if conditions got dangerous, and seriously, without them, so many people wouldn't have been able to witness the volcano like they did from the start. For Frank and myself, we took extra precautions by always carrying gas masks that were protecting us against the potential poisonous gases that could be given off by the volcano, or whenever conditions might change. And basically, whenever we'd arrive at the eruption site, we happily would take the advice of the search and rescue team members whenever necessary. Sometimes we would even go up to them and ask what's going on and how's the conditions today and how's the conditions right now. And that always benefited us because we had that extra feeling of being safe, which was important because we're at a volcano and it's pretty intense to begin with. So we're all incredibly thankful to the Icelandic search and rescue team. And if you have been to the eruption site yourself or intend to visit in the future, we highly encourage you to support their efforts via the donation link in the description of this video. Although the location of the volcanic eruption was fairly accessible, the hike was still around two to three hours each way, with uneven surfaces and a few steep inclines. So of course we wanted to keep our gear that we had on our backs to an absolute minimum. But we didn't. Our bags were pretty much full as they could be every single time because we wanted to film not only the volcanic eruption itself, but also the people. Because of this intention, we actually had to bring a lot of extra gear with us to ensure we could cover all aspects of the scene. 
In total, we ended up visiting the volcano on four separate occasions for the film itself. And each day we focused on capturing the reactions and experiences of people at the volcano through interviews, which were filmed on either the Sony a7R4, a7R3, or the Canon EOS R5. Most of the time, we were using a Sigma 24mm f1.4 art lens for the interviews to keep them feeling a bit more intimate and close, whilst capturing the grand scale of the landscape at the same time for context. For audio, we used a Rode shotgun mic that fed directly into a zoom recorder, but because Iceland is quite a windy place, clean audio was a bit difficult, and we were often interrupted by planes, drones, and helicopters that would often fly overhead during our interviews anyways. It's incredible. And, yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't... I'll stop for a second. It's not about coming up. But we ended up making it work with what we had anyways. Now, during interviews, Frank would pull focus, monitor the audio, and check the framing while I asked the questions and drove along the conversation. I mean, basically, Frank did everything while I just sat there talking. I mean, yeah, just kidding, but thanks, Frank. <laughs> Many of the close-up shots of the people from a distance were captured using either a Sigma 135 art lens or the Sony 135 G Master lens, both f1.8. And we used them either on the Sony or on the R5. Essentially, with this setup, we wanted to capture as many people viewing the eruption as possible and their reactions, but without being too intrusive. The 135 was a great focal length for this purpose because of the smaller profile. Now, also shooting in APS-C cropped mode on the Sony system even allowed us a little bit more reach as well to capture those extra special moments and those reactions that we were hoping to get. Also, since the area was in fact so large, we wanted to make sure that we could showcase the stadium feel of the location, which was a bit difficult to do from the ground. So we used the DJI Mavic Air 2 for the aerial shots. And this gave us the point of view that we had hoped for to not only showcase the scale of the volcano, but the crowds of people that were there and how densely they spread out across the eruption site. Now, despite the dangers of flying a drone above scorching hot lava, I was actually quite conservative in how close I got. And although many of the shots did seem extremely close, I did manage to not lose my drone or melt it during the process of making this film, and I'm quite uh, proud about that. Because weather and lighting conditions change so often, I found myself switching between various ND filters that I have from PolarPro, which fit really easily onto the lens of the Mavic, and this allowed me to capture a lot of the dynamic range that was in the sky as well as in the actual lava itself. Sometimes even just flying over the lava, it was so bright that I needed to actually use the highest ND filter in order to capture the exposure correctly. So I was using a couple of ND filters and I would switch them out depending on the condition that I needed them for. All in all, I actually couldn't have shot a lot of the stuff from the air if I didn't have these. So they're pretty essential, especially for this type of event. In terms of other lenses that we used during the production, this included the Canon 50mm f1.2, which was mainly used to capture close-up details and more compressed shots of people in the landscape that weren't as close as the 135. Now, we also used a very, very old version of the Canon 300mm f2.8 lens for extreme close-ups of the lava flying out of the volcano. This lens is really old, the one that I have, but it's great on a tripod, and I'm really impressed by how sharp it is despite it being from before I was actually born. <laughs> and last in terms of gear, we also used a Ronin and a shoulder rig on occasion to achieve stable shots on the field. The Ronin we used mainly for moving and tracking shots, while the shoulder rig was mainly used for the interviews, as well as capturing some of those intimate shots using the 135 to keep them stable. Now that's it for all of the main equipment that we used, but a full detailed list of the gear that we used for the production is listed below in the description of this video. As a closing thought, I also wanted to mention a small disclaimer. Now, the purpose of this video is not to serve as a guide on how to photograph and film at the volcanic eruption here in Iceland. As it is, the volcano started just over two weeks ago, and it's constantly changing. Since it began, it's already transformed into a totally different eruption site, and at each stage of its development, there are various levels of risk involved with visiting the eruption site itself. 
Ultimately, if you do decide you want to visit the volcano yourself, you should consult the most up-to-date information about viewing the eruption on the day that you visit. Also, keep in mind that the weather here in Iceland is totally unpredictable and that any attempt to hike out into the nature here in general should be done so with proper preparation. And I've included links in the description of this video with the best resources for keeping up to date about the volcano. Also, I'll mention at the moment, they're predicting that this eruption could go on for weeks, months, or actually even years more. And if that's the case, hopefully you'll have the chance to visit yourself and maybe we'll even see each other out there. So that'll be cool. As a final, final thought, I wanted to give thanks again to Adorama for the support in creating this film. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoy the main film. And as we say in Iceland, tak.